Welcome to the third video in the Magic of Water series for SFI and on Forum Ishka. So today we're going to talk about water and the blue planet that we all live on and how it's so important because it sustains all life on Earth. 71% of its surface is covered in water and that water is in many forms that we're going to look at today. So we can find it in our rivers, our lakes, our oceans and seas, our ice caps and glaciers, even in the clouds in our atmosphere and also under the ground in wells and aquifers and in bedrock. So this tank here represents all of the water on Earth. So we've got five litres in the tank. And I'm going to take out 500 mils using this beaker to represent the fresh water. And Suzanne is going to add some dye into this tank to show our ocean and our salty water. So what I'm doing by adding the dye is I'm showing you that the majority of the water on the planet, this blue planet, is actually ocean water. So we're going to call this blue, this salty water, this ocean water that's unavailable to us for drinking, unless we treat it, but we don't tend to do that here. So that's a lot of the water, that's about 97% of the water that's completely unavailable to us in terms of drinking. So this is our fresh water, but all of it is not easily accessible to us because quite a bit of it is actually locked away in the ice caps and glaciers. So I'm going to pour out 400 mils into this bag, which represents the ice caps. A little bit more. Okay, that should be about it. And I'm gonna seal this bag. And once I've done that, I've locked it away and I'm gonna put it with the ocean water. So we have 100 mils left. That's about 2% of what we started with. So it's a tiny fraction. And this represents the fresh water that's available to us to use for drinking. So I'm gonna take out 10 mils of that, which represents the surface water, which is the water that we mix up our rivers and our lakes. And Suzanne, I'm gonna give it to you to mind for okay. a minute. So if you can hold on to that for me, please. Because it's really important that we protect this water and keep it clean, because this is all our rivers and our lakes. So the rest that I have here is about 90 mils, and this is groundwater. So we find this below the ground in the poor spaces in soil and also fractures in bedrock. So we can get access to this, but we have to go down deep into the earth and the soil to get it. So that's our groundwater. And that's our surface water. How is that going, Suzanne? Yeah, definitely hard to look after it, but it's vitally important that we do. Protecting this tiny amount of water that we have in the surface water is really important for us for the animals, for the plants, and for the entire ecosystems. So we need to make sure that we look after it and that we don't waste it. It's vital to us, it's vital to our survival, and water is precious and magical. And even though it rains loads in Ireland and we think that we have loads of water, never be fooled by that. Remember that it's a small proportion of all the water on the planet, same water that's cycling around as, as you were told in other videos, and we need to look after that all the time. So let's go out to a river, see what's there, let's see what lives in the river, let's see what needs the water, uses the water, and let's see how magical the river is and how precious it is. And I want to prove to you, and so does Caroline, that what lives in the water is absolutely fascinating, that a river isn't just trees, it isn't just rocks, it isn't just the water, there's abundance of life there. So let's go. So if we look around this beautiful site, we have our trees, we have our plants, we have our stones, we have the water. It all works together as an entire ecosystem. And then all of the living components of that are part of that ecosystem, all needing water. Caroline is standing in a fast flowing area and that's known as a riffle. And a riffle is basically an area where the water is moving over the stones and moving fast. By dislodging that substrate, Caroline is getting the little guys that cling on to come into our trail and we can take a look. So let's do that. Okay, so we're doctors, but we're not the type of doctor that you would come to if you're sick, but we like to find out how healthy a river is. And there's a couple of things we can check. So I know you've heard a little bit already about the pH of a river and how it's very important that that's kept between about six and eight uh, to maintain a healthy river. Also, oxygen in the water is really, really important because all of the insects and the fish and everything that lives in the river needs oxygen to survive. So we can check the oxygen, but also what gives us a really good idea of how healthy a river is, is what lives there. And the macroinvertebrates, or the little bugs that live in the silt and the sediment in the river. So that's why we're here and we're going to have a look in the tray and see if we can see some bio-indicators. So some 
macroinvertebrates that tell us whether the river has lots of oxygen and is really healthy or could do with a little bit more work. So the more things like mayflies and stoneflies that have gills on the outside that we find, we know that that's going to be really good quality water because they love clean water, they love lots of oxygen and they can cling on really tightly to those rocks. So take a look at the large messy invertebrate that's just crossing the tray there. This one is a cased caddisfly and it's really exciting and it's quite magical because it uses large plant fragments or whatever it finds in the river to make a case for its body by itself. Some of the species have very distinct case shapes and types and we can identify what species they are by looking at that. Like the mayfly we saw before, these hatch out as flies and they look pretty much like small moths and then they mate, they lay the eggs and the cycle starts over again but most of their life cycle is spent in the river. And these cased caddists are generally indicative of decent water quality so if they're present in good numbers we know that we have good water quality and plenty of oxygen for what lives there. We start to get things like worms and snails and leeches and we lose things like mayflies and stoneflies, then we know that our site is impacted or it's polluted. So something has come in there and messed up our ecosystem and affected it. And then generally speaking, in a lot of cases, we get a bit of everything and that's good because a bit of everything means that everything's happy there. So what we can do then is we can come along, we can do this and we can say, well, this water is excellent quality this one's not so good so we need to work a little bit harder to get it back and this one is really poor so we have to put a lot of effort into this. Okay so we can see that we have lots of life on our tray here which is great and sometimes when we look around none of us live too far from a river or a lake and there's lots of water around us but don't forget remember when you think back to the water that was in Suzanne's hands earlier on that's only a really small proportion of the water on the planet and that water can only sustain life if it's unpolluted and clean. Unfortunately, the magic of our water is under threat and all the life that lives in our rivers and lakes because we're in the middle of a biodiversity crisis. We all have a part to play and we can turn it around. This beautiful site can be kept clean and healthy by all of us working together. The cleaner we can keep this site, the more diversity we have in terms of macroinvertebrates and that plays its part all the way up the food chain for the fish and everything else. If we can do that, we can keep the magic of water alive.